So we're here at Iron TechCon, and uh, you were on stage today. Yep. And part of the announcement, you're making 64-bit. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we're um, we're licensing you now of the A57 technology from ARM. Uh, we'll take that and build our 64-bit platform, so it'll be available in about in about two years. So, how's it been thus far? With the company, Calzita. Oh, it's great. I've been with Calzita for two years. We've seen tremendous interest in the marketplace for this whole concept of power efficient uh, servers based on ARM technology. We're shipping our A9 product right now. Uh, we have a number of partners from uh, Dell, HP, Penguin, Boston Limited that have all built servers based on this product and they're actually act actively you know, installing it at customer size, doing performance characterization, power measurements, and so forth. So is it still uh, on the A9, on the first product, yeah, is it still kind of like testing or is it already... The A9, the A9 uh, chip itself is in full production now. Uh, so now we're just helping our OEM part partners uh, uh, produce full production servers. Uh, one company has declared it as full production, it's Boston Limited in the UK, one in the US, uh, Penguin Computing. Uh, they have a production server they have available now, so they're, they're available for sale now and, and customers are buying them and starting to do their early tests, and build up proof of concepts and then figure out you know, what, how they're going to use it and where they're going to use it. So how many months has it been actually like full production? It's been about, about a month, about a month in, in Only a month? About a month in production, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the chip is finished. Uh, it's all about optimizing the chassis now to get the most power efficient solution you can get. So how power efficient can it be with the first generation? Very power efficient. We've measured uh, 24 nodes, so 24 quad core nodes with 24 SSDs, 96 gigabytes of DRAM in a two new chassis. Uh, we measure that somewhere between 130 and 200 watts, depending on what you're running on the, on the workload. So to put that in perspective, it's far less than the power of a dual socket Xeon. We have 24 complete servers with memory, with storage, uh, all on a two new chassis. So, um, and that's measured at the wall. Can you explain uh, what, what exactly kind of like interest you have right now in getting yeah, that? Yeah, into we're seeing interest in, um, in storage, so sort of um, cloud level storage. So, um, we're seeing interest in um, analytics, both on Wall Street and Silicon Valley. We're seeing interest in um, web serving, web hosting. <coughs> web hosting is a perfect example of where local data can fit. And in general, cloud computing. Uh, small and medium instances of compute uh, can be delivered very cost effectively on a, on a Cal Zeta basis. So, so do you have publicly announced targets in terms of how big it's going to be? You know, we haven't publicly announced uh, revenue goals or anything like that. We do think the market probably starts off at maybe 10% of the market uh, in the current implementation. As we go out to our A15 product a year from now, we think the market probably doubles in size. And when we go out to 64-bit, um, which is the, in today's announcement, then it probably doubles in size again. So think of it as going from a 10% of the market today to 20% of the market a year from now in terms of what's really serviceable by these technologies. And then when 64-bit comes along, it's full ecosystem, then we'd see the market could be up to 40% of, of, of the server market. So when you talk about 10, 20, and 40%, you talk about uh, the new servers being purchased on the market, not yes. like the existing. That's correct. Yeah, so yeah. it's what, what the growth is going to yeah, be. That's correct. That's correct. So it's, it's kind of like a huge opportunity here. It's a huge opportunity. Well, that's why so many companies are getting into the space, right? AMD announced yesterday that they're going to get into the ARM server processor business. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of people lining up to, to go after this because a lot of people think that this is a very real opportunity. The market does not like a monopoly. Uh, the market likes choice. They want to have choice. And ARM is getting to the point now where it's a viable choice for a lot of workloads. Um, the key thing is which workloads. This is not a general purpose platform. It's not a server you're just going to buy to run you know, your local Outlook exchange server. Um, it's, it's a server you're going you're gonna to buy in thousands or tens of thousands of units to solve one problem and do it very power efficiently. So it's really the largest data centers in the world that are looking at this, uh, both financial services, internet data service, services, and, um, and cloud service providers. And uh, so what kind of this software is working? Like there's a LAMP, uh, what do you call yeah, it? Yeah, uh, you know, Apache, Apache uh, all the code's already upstream in Linux kernel, so standard Linux kernel. Apache, uh, uh, all the Apache stack uh, is available, not all, almost all of it. Um, 
We actually donated a cluster of servers to Apache Software Foundation, with, uh, sponsored by Dell, uh, about two weeks ago. So they're actively building on our ARM technology today. Uh, as far as Linux is concerned, we're in the standard ARM, we're in the standard Linux distros now. Uh, Canonical has a enterprise-ready LTS long-term support um, uh, release that uh, supports our platform right out of the box. Um, Fedora is also available, so that's that's there. Uh, Oracle now has uh, performant uh, Java implementation uh, available now for for ARM, and you just download it and run on Calzada. So pretty much LAMP stack. Java, um, Ruby on Rails. Uh, we're running our own website on uh, WordPress. It just it just works. Uh, no no code changes needed. No compatibility. Issues. Well, what kind of big software challenges are ahead? I think the biggest software challenge ahead right now is more tuning, which is why we're collaborating with the Apache Software Foundation. Um, if if you have uh, if you have an application that is let's say process uh, I/O um, intensive today, in other words you have a lot of processor headroom on your x86, then you can write some code that's kind of, I wouldn't say sloppy code, but let's just say it's not designed for efficient CPU cycles because you've got plenty of CPU and memory to throw at the problem. It's I.O. bound. Uh, when you take that application and move it to ARM, it may not be I.O. bound anymore. Um, our I.O. subsystem is just as fast as an x86. Right? We run, run SATA V2 at the same same speeds as a Sandy Bridge. Uh, what, we, what we have, of course, is less processing power, much, much less power. So now the question is, can you get those applications so that they consume fewer CPU cycles? And the answer is yes, it just can't take some tuning. So I think that's the next biggest challenge, is really tuning the code for small footprint, uh, lower horsepower, lower MIPS, if you will, on, on, on each core. So on stage you were asked at the end uh, what you think is going to happen in five years. You, you, did you say something about uh, that the same software on, can run on phone and on the, and that's, that can bring yeah. you? There could be, there, there's some interesting use cases for that. Uh, they're a few years out, but you could imagine um, being able to have an Android cloud, right, running on ARM servers. Um, you could imagine being able to have an application which is distributed uh, and portions of it can run locally, portions of it can run in the cloud, um, uh, depending on what kind of device you have. Uh, but it's all the same code. Um, you could imagine uh, television services providing, you know, Android applications onto your onto your local TV set. Uh, why? Because it's ARM, so it all just it all just runs. Uh, these are far out things. These are not things that people are building today. But there are things. They are things people are thinking about. And imagining it's possible. Once you have a, a cloud based on ARM, it runs Linux and so forth. But it also runs the exact same software that's uh, running on your mobile device today because it's on ARM. Can you talk about the yield and uh, uh, has your your processor just just works like uh, 100 percent? That has there hasn't been like bugs to debug. No, we're, we're having the time? very high yield. We use TSMC. Yeah. 40 nanometer, and we're getting um, that's very stable technology, yeah. so that's not an issue. We have uh, excellent yield from the TSMC, we're very happy with what they've been able to do for us. All right, so uh, going forward, huge market's gonna be huge. That's 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 our story, and we're sticking to it. You bet it's gonna be a big market.